Good morning, everybody. Um, today we're going to play with hamstrings a little bit, right? So the hamstrings are the backs of the thighs, um, and they are um, an amazing set of muscles. There's three of them, and they two of them wrap around the knee, one to the back of the knee, and they all attach to those lovely little sit bones, right? They're called ischial tuberosities, but they they attach to the sit bones. Um, and so in yoga, we hear that all the time, you know, sit bones, sit bones, sit bones. So, so the hamstring muscles go uh, attach way up here. So when we are doing forward folds and things like that, we feel that stretch of the hamstrings, um, that attachment from the sit bones, right? We'll say lift the sit bones and we can feel that little extra pull of the hamstrings as they attach. And then they come around the knees, right? Behind them around the knees. And so sometimes when we have some tenderness around the knees, it could be from tight hamstrings uh, or, or from a lot of other things, but, but that's one potential. And often in yoga and everything else in life, we do things that strengthen the quadriceps but we don't do a lot to strengthen the hamstrings. So within your limits and your levels, be mindful of the knees and we'll just see where we go today. Um, so let's start by just sitting well. And uh, you definitely want your blanket or towel if I didn't say that already. Um, and then just notice however you are seated and you can sit on a blanket, right, of course, just kind of notice if you can feel your sit bones or feel where those hamstrings might attach. Usually we'll move the flesh out from the sit bones, <laughs> sit bones. <laughs> now that's all I'm gonna say all class, sit bones, <laughs> right? But maybe you notice that like if you round back some, you kind of roll, um, over those sit bones. And then if you pull forward, you'll feel that uh, little harder surface of the bones where the sit bones are and the hamstrings attach. If you came further forward, you would lift off of them uh, once again. So see if you can find that grounding and draw the shoulders back to the side or back body, but really gently. And then close the eyes and feel the breath. And start to move into your center, into your grounding. The last couple of classes um, uh, at the park and on Zoom, we've played a little bit with that grounding. And with all of, again, all of the stuff kind of going on in the world, our grounding, our centering is really important so that we can move from that place. So feel yourself very centered, start to draw the outside world away from you and come into your center, into the truth, the present moment. And just feel your breath. And maybe you exhale through your mouth. Maybe you let that go, that kind of deep sigh, um, allowing the nervous system to resettle a little bit. So maybe you notice that taking a nice deep inhale and exhaling, letting it go. Good, couple more right here. And exhaling. Good, one more. And exhale. And then let's just do a few moments of Nadi Shodhana, which is alternate nostril breathing. Um, again, when we're feeling a little kind of pulled and unsettled, I find uh, alternate nostril breathing to be a very centering, pranayama. So again, sitting well, if you already know it, you can go ahead and start 
uh, started. If you don't know it, it's kind of interesting. And if you're a little stuffy, allergies and things, it can it can make a difference. Uh, so don't don't stress, don't force yourself. But you're going to start by taking a nice deep breath in. And take your thumb, usually it's your right hand, but take your thumb and close off your right nostril. Exhale through your left side, nostril. And then inhale through your left nostril. Take your ring finger, ring, pinky finger, close the left side off and exhale right. Inhale right side. Close that side off, exhale left. Inhaling left side. Close that side off, exhale right. Relax your jaw. Inhale right side. Close that side off, exhale left. And then continue on your own so that you're not trying to keep up with my rhythm, inhaling one side. And closing that side off, exhaling the other side. Maybe the breath deepens a little bit. Maybe feel how your nervous system starts to calm down. Last one. When you have finished your last round, let the hand go. Feel your breath. Good. And then open the eyes, shift out the legs if they're getting chatty already. Again, try to get a sense of those sit bones. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, left hand down, right arm over. Big stretch here, just let it go. Soften the head, the neck. Maybe you look down at your left elbow and then up at your right. Just be mindful of your neck. You don't have to be this far down on the ground, right? Your arm, your left arm can be pretty straight here. So don't overdo it, it's early and breathe. Good, one more, look up and look down reach that arm up take the left arm up exhale other side start by just stretching just feeling that nice release opening up your whole side body and then maybe looking down and looking up good and down and look up good. a couple more just warming up the neck and last one oh yeah and press up. Good, take both arms to cactus. Breathe, press back through your shoulders, like really squeeze those arms back. And then as you exhale, bring the elbows together. Inhale, open up, exhale it. Good, and open everybody. Exhale, squeeze it in, last one, open. And exhale, squeeze, keep those hands together and see if you can raise the elbows without letting them part, right? So you're just trying to squeeze them up and then interlace your hands, press the arms out in front of you, draw the shoulders back, take the arms up. Good, remember, right, if this is hard for your wrists or your shoulders, you can just keep the arms separate, it's perfectly okay. We're just stretching out those wrists a little bit. And then circle to one side, 
Bring it down and forward, circle all the way up three times, one side and up. Good, last circle here. And go the other way, shift. Oh, starting to wake things up here a little bit, moving our bodies. If you've been already working this morning, sitting at your desk, you need this big, nice open. Good, and let go. Whew, good, shake it out. Grab a strap as a possible need, not necessary, but maybe. And then take your, I'm gonna mirror here. So take your right leg out and bring your left leg in to um, Janu Sirsasana or single leg forward fold. Lots of options here. Um, take a block under your knee, especially if that knee doesn't come to the floor easily. You could take your blanket and place it behind the knee to give yourself a little bit more opening so that you're not compressing the knee. So lots of possibilities there. And then move the flesh out of the sit bones again. And remember, right, that foot is usually up at the upper thigh. But again, if your knee is just not at all happy with that, you lower that leg down until it is happy or you straighten it up, okay? And then just feel this for a second. Feel yourself really, really tall, um, open through the front body. Inhale, take the arms up. You're gonna swan dive forward a little bit. And then before you even think about dropping the hands, I want you to isometrically pull that right leg back. Okay, so feel the muscles start to engage. You might feel the attachment of that sit bone. Dig the heel of that foot in and then let the hands come to the floor. Now, it's early, right? It's early in class. So I want you to be really mindful of how deep you dive right away. Um, so just draw the shoulders back. Try to pull the left or the right foot back. Dig the heel in. You're already activating the hamstrings. And then kind of notice as we engage this right leg, we give the uh, uh, the, the leg affects the pelvis, so the pelvis can move forward, and then we can move forward a little bit. So draw the shoulders back, draw the leg back, flex your foot, find your breath. Now that strap, which I said to grab, could maybe go around the foot if you want, don't have to. If you are more upright, maybe keeping that back neutral. Maybe you just hold on to your strap and pull back. You're still gonna get that lovely little stretch here. Good, everybody breathe and notice. Keep dragging that foot back isometrically. Keep lengthening the torso, right? So try not to round, try to keep it nice and long. Breathe, everybody. And then lift up, move up, lift up, lift up, lift up. Draw that right heel back. See if you can grab your foot, your ankle, your big toe, and take it up to the ceiling. So you can grab your big toe or you can grab the outside of your foot. That's a whole different stretch. Find your breath. Your other leg is grounded. You're reaching up. You're broadening through the shoulders. Maybe the left arm goes up as well. A little bit of balance work here, but also a big old stretch for the hamstring. If that's too much of a stretch, just bend your knee, right? Just bend the knee a little bit. That'll take some of that pressure off. Good, find your breath, squeeze your glutes. So press down through that left leg, see if you can let go of the leg. That takes a whole bunch of strength and lower it down. Whew. Good, raise that left leg, straighten it out. Whew. Shake it out, roll your ankles and the other way. Good, and let's go to the other side. So once again, moving the flesh out from the sit bones Find the pose that makes sense for your body. Make sure to protect that bent knee. Lift up tall, press down through the sit bones, drag your left leg back isometrically, press down through the heel. Inhale, reach up. 
Exhale, forward fold, slight pause. Keep that torso open, keep that chest lifted. Press down through the heel. Feel how much that leg is getting active. The pelvis tilts forward, right? Anterior tilt of the pelvis. And then the hands come down wherever they are. Often one side tighter than the other. This is my tighter side. So I, I go into it much slower. If you would rather use your strap here, I love strap work. Um, it makes perfect sense. And then draw the shoulders back, draw the leg back isometrically, right? You can actually feel a slight movement there, but it's as if you were taking that whole leg bone and pressing it into the hip socket a little bit more. Find your breath, everybody. Pause, just think about it. Maybe dig the heel in a little bit more. Find your breath. So there's like this, for me, there's this a lot of efforting at first, right? I'm digging in the heel, I'm pulling the leg back, I'm doing all this stuff, but then I wanna find the ease part. I wanna find the softness in the pose because you want your body to move in its way around the pose. So you don't wanna like constantly be tight. So find the softness without like over rounding or anything and just see where your body will go here as we breathe, as we pause. One more deep breath. And then press up, lift up, bend that left leg. Grab toe, grab outside foot, grab ankle, grab the behind the knee. You are obviously leaning back a little bit. Press down through that grounded leg. Open up your chest, shoulders. Maybe the other arm comes up. Find your breath. That's it. Big deep breath, everybody. Good. See if you can release. Woo! Yeah. And lower it down, release those hands, release those legs and just shake it out. And then from wherever you are, go ahead and take the legs wide. Take the legs wide and then bend the knees and dig into your heels. So we're again, activating those hamstring muscles at the backs of the legs. And I just want you to dig as if you could pull your body through those legs. It doesn't have to be a big bend of the knees. It's more that isometric work. I used to know um, a guy at work, he worked for the city and he was like this big old <sighs> rocking guy. And everybody, all the firefighters would ask him, what do you do, what do you do, what do you do? And he said, I do isometric work. He said, I don't lift weights, I lift me. <laughs> and it was, right? And it was just amazing how strong he was all from doing kind of isometric work. So take those hands or those arms inside your knees if you can, and then push your knees into your arms and resist. So again, it looks like nothing, <laughs> but you should be feeling this, right? And it, so we're working with the legs, working with the hips, <sighs> squeeze in, keep pulling the heels back isometrically, find your breath, and let go of the push and just straighten the legs. Bring the legs together, flex the feet, find dandasana, quadricep work, right? As we engage the front of the legs, the back of the legs stretch or at least stay neutral. Inhale, reach up, press down through the shoulder, squeeze the belly, lift one leg optionally. And then bend the knee and squeeze it into your chest and then press it straight out. Good, three more. Squeeze it in slow, press it out. If you would rather have hands on the floor, go ahead and put them down. Squeeze it in, press out. Good, one more. Squeeze like you're squeezing those hamstrings and press out, lower the leg, lift tall. Lift tall, tall, tall. Other side, lift the other leg, ground the one that's on the floor, squeeze the knee into your level, press it out. <sighs> squeeze and press. Good, two more, squeeze 
excuse me, and press good. One more squeeze. Press, lower, lift tall. Lower the hands, squeeze the legs. Press your hips off the floor. Optional, of course, you don't have to. Just see if you can. And then bend your knees and squeeze the knees in and set your hips down. Good, shake it all out. Grab your blanket. Grab your blanket. That sounds like an invitation to a nap, doesn't it? Grab your blanket. Let's just all take a nap. <clears throat> so blanket or towel. How you do it is going to be completely up to you. You do need a kind of a, a easy surface to move. Um, and if you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you don't, paper plates under your heels work really well. And if you still don't, then I want you to do more isometric work at stages. Okay, so I got both of my legs or both of my heels on the blanket <clears throat> and I'm going to press down. For a lot of us, it's gonna be easier maybe just to lean back a little, just don't sag back, just lean back. Now, dig into your heels, really dig. Start to bend the knees. Push as hard down on your blanket as you can, and then just bend the knees to your level. I know a couple of you with some knee stuff, so you're not gonna bring the knees all the way up, but I want that digging in to stay. Now, dig and release, keep digging. As if you were pushing this blanket, this whatever it is under your heels, so hard because it's like thick mud. Now, keep going. If you don't have the ability to slip slide, I want you to dig and pause, walk the heels up an inch or two, dig and pause. So I want you to just do it as if you were walking up instead of sliding up. All right, dig, 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 squeeze. Think about those hamstrings. And then dig on the way out. Good, if you're not sure, take your hands to the backs of your legs and you can feel those little baby muscles working and slowly press out. Good, two more right here, dig hard, dig hard. That's it. And press out slow. Last one, dig in and press out. Good, I want you to take the feet, they're not gonna drop all the way probably for most of us, but I want you to take them out to the sides and then I want you to dig in and I want you to squeeze in. Squeeze and push out. Don't have to go far, I know this looks so weird on camera. Squeeze. And out, good, two more, squeeze, like really push those heels into the blanket. And out, last one, squeeze in. And press out, you know what's coming, turn the toes in, watch the knees, squeeze in, press out. Working with all three hamstrings, squeeze it in, Woo. and out. I feel this one the most. Squeeze in, press it out. One more, squeeze it in and press out. Good, turn the toes back up. I want you to come to the halfway place for you, wherever that is. And then I want you to dig into the blanket and try, actually let's take the blanket out because what I wanna do is it gonna work with the blanket. So dig your heels into your mat and then pull back isometrically and see if you can hold. Like really pull back, you're pulling back. So there was an interesting study, I don't know if any of you saw it, where they were doing bicep curls with um, uh, or, uh, participants. And they found that you got so much strength by pulling up, you got so much strength by slowly releasing, you got the most strength change by holding the weight. So isometric work, right? It's kind of, kind of cool. So here we are doing isometric work. If I were turned sideways, all I'm doing is digging in and trying to pull back as much as I can to activate the hamstrings. If you clamp up, by all means, just stop and pause. Breathe, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. 
keep pulling like like you're gonna pull your yoga mat and then release it and straighten the legs Whoo! i know i know i know all right so let's pause on that for now come to table pose grab your block optional with the block we have done this several times over the last I don't know, month or two months. So we're going to do it a little bit more because again, it's hamstring. The, one of the biggest imbalances I think in the body is strong quads, not strong hamstrings because in yoga specifically, we stretch the hammies all the time. And then those hamstrings aren't strong. So they pull on the low back. There's just like so much going on. So optional with your block, go ahead and place it between your heel and your sit bone, right? Guess where those hamstrings attach? I've got mine on my right side. You decide for you. And then lift the leg either way. Oh no, it's, oop, there it went. All right. <laughs> so instead of putting, if you can't hold it in place, which I realize I'm not gonna be able to, um, just place it between your knees, same thing. Lift the leg. If you don't have the block, just bend the knee to your level. Squeeze it up, squeeze the block. Here's the isometric work again. And then knee to chest and lift up. One, squeeze in and two. Squeeze in for three, squeeze four, one more, squeeze in for five and then hold the knee, flex your foot, squeeze your block. So again, we're doing the isometric work. Just notice. <clears throat> now optional, your left hand, if your block is at your right knee or no block, just your right leg is up, left hand moves forward, kick stand your leg, squeeze the heck out of your block and take the arm up. So variation of, I call it quarter moon. <clears throat> Breathe, find that. If you can, you're gonna reach back and see if you can find your foot. <sighs> yep, I know. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Good, release the foot, hold the block. Take your hand back, transition so that left leg is back to neutral and let go. <laughs> and take it out. Ah, joy, joy, or not joy, right? <laughs> All right, so let's take the block or no block between behind your left knee. If you're not using a block, I get it. That's tough on the leg. So you, what you would do instead is you're lifting and then you're bending to your level, okay? Don't worry, be happy as much as we can be. Squeeze that block, hold on to it, lift the leg. And just breathe. Squeeze and hold. And then five times, bring knee to chest, one. Squeeze it out. And two, squeeze. This is three, yep. And four, squeeze your block if you got it. And five, hold right here, just squeeze. Maybe flex your foot. That's gonna make it feel even more active. Optionally, kick stand out, adjust your right hand, squeeze the heck out of that block. Take the arm up, that's it, squeeze, squeeze. Optional again, reach back, grab a hold of your foot or ankle. That's it. Smile on the inside. <laughs> Release, hand to floor, engage and lower. Woo! Take that block out. I know those are some interesting ones, I think. And then from table pose to downward facing dog. And once you're in down dog, just stretch it out. Find your breath. That's it. Good, lower down to your knees, everybody. Step forward with your right leg. Find that. You can have blocks under hands. It's always, 
nice. I, I never used to use blocks under my hands, um, but I like it for just kind of taking the pressure off the upper body, especially if I wanna work on something unrelated to upper body. So we're in our first lunge and what are we doing? We're stretching this left quad, right? So we stretch the left quad, often the hamstring will either be neutral or engage. So stretching through there, squeeze your left glute, optionally come to toes. That's your first option. So you're flipping your toes under. Second option is you're gonna squeeze that left foot toward the hip and just hold. Find your breath. Again, isometric work. All we're doing is squeezing. The knee does not have to be super bent to get here. Finally, I want you to just feel as if you could pull your left knee forward. So you're squeezing, you're pulling, you're doing all kinds of crazy stuff, right? Hold it here, just breathe. And then release the knee if it's bent, release the toes if they are flipped. Take your hands to your knee. <laughs> open up your shoulders, take the arms up, press the top of your back foot into the floor and try to squeeze both legs towards each other. Big deep breath, everybody. That's it. Good, release those hands, slow, slow, slow. Slide your right leg back, step your left leg forward. So we start in an easy lunge. We start with just a simple stretch of that uh, right side quadricep muscle. And just gonna check it out. How's it feel on this side? Is it tighter? Is it looser? What's happening? Optionally, just flip the toes under right there. It starts to get more engagement back here. Still okay, bend the knee, squeeze in. Breathe, hold that squeeze, hold, hold, hold. Don't be afraid to do to engage and then drag the front or the back uh, knee forward a little bit, isometrically. <laughs> You'll know that word, right? <laughs> By the end of class. Squeeze, breathe, notice. Good, release that hamstring. Unflip your toes, press into the top of your foot, take your hands to your knee, squeeze the right glute, take the hands up. Great joy, 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 breathe. Ah, and exhale, hands come to the floor, listen up. You're gonna slide your left leg back, set your blocks off to the side for a second, from table pose to downward facing dog. Pedal out your feet. Remember the shoulders, right? Open up those shoulders. Keep good integrity there. So choices. One, you're going to stay here in down dog. Two, you're going to come back down to your knees and do that variation of just bending the knee and straightening it. Three. Door number three, lift your right leg. Don't over lift. Bend the knee and straighten for five and four. Squeeze it in, think about what you're working. And two and one, you're gonna step through, right leg steps through. Hands go back to blocks, knee up or knee down. Hands come to knee, lift up. Here we are in the lunge. Pause, find your balance right here, right? So you're ideally you're on the ball of that back foot. If not, you bend it a little or turn it a little, but be mindful if you turn, okay? Squeeze your back glute. Here's the hard part of this whole thing. Your hands stay on your front thighs. You bend your back knee. Okay, so here we are working with the quad or working with the hamstring again. Big deep breath. If you feel really stable, take the arms up. Squeeze your back glute. Working muscle more than bone here. You got it. 
take the hands back, push through your back leg, back to lunge. Hands come to the blocks. Lower your knee. Oh, good stretch, everybody. Slide that knee back, move the blocks out of the way. I know, hang in. Always remember you can take a break. Down dog. Ooh. Right, so we start to notice the legs are opening up a little bit, right? They're getting their stretch on. Good. Optionally here, take the left leg up. Level out the hips, tone through your belly. Bend your left knee again, optional. Just for five, squeeze in the hammies and release. Three and four. Whew, that's it. One more, five and then step it through. Ooh, and breathe. <clears throat> Find your pose. Nice engagement. Remember your back knee can be down. When you're ready, hands come to knees. Open up your chest. Pause here. Find your stability. Optionally, you're gonna bend the knee. Whew. Trust me, you have to work harder here than if your leg was straight. Find your breath. Careful, careful. Take the arms up. That's it. Find your center. I'm squeezing that back leg. I'm working with both legs. And then push through your back knee. Hands come to the blocks. Listen up, everybody. You're going to step forward. Ah, oh, relief, hands to knees. Come on up to standing and roll it out, right? So it's really kind of an interesting thing to, to think, how do we get these backs of the legs to find that energy? <clears throat> so you're up at the front of your mat, you've got your blocks. If you feel steady on them, you can take the blocks up hot. Um, if you want, you can take a medium. I wouldn't take them low. So once again, this option, this idea, right? Then I'll demo high and then I'll probably lower mine because this will be where many of you will want to go. So I'm thinking about this L shape, toning in through the belly. I'm gonna raise my right leg. Does not have to be high. It can be halfway to the floor. It's not about the height. So one, feel the standing leg working. Two, optionally, bend your knee, your right knee, squeeze that heel in, and then extend out. Yep, and again, and again, three, squeeze, four, squeeze, last one, squeeze. Extend the leg out. Want you to put a slight bend in the standing leg. So again, we're working, first we work the right side, now we're working that left side again. Does not have to be a big bend. Building strength. Straight in the left leg, step down through the right leg, bend both knees, hands to knees, come up to standing. Find your breath. Shake it out, right? You don't have to stand still. Shake it out. <laughs> Woo, that's it. I know this is, especially if you've got knee stuff or hip stuff, this can be a whole bunch of work. For, for others, this is, is not, a, not a real problem. So just be mindful, right? You can sit one out. You can pause. You can give your knees some love, right? Just give them a little good rub and breathe. All right, let's go to the other side. <clears throat> so once again, you're coming down on your blocks or either high level or second. You feel really nice and stable. Your ankles are just below your hips. <sighs> your belly is toned. You've got a nice neutral spine. Lift the left leg if you can. <sighs> and breathe. Good, from here, maybe optional again, five bends of that knee. This is four and three, yep, and two and one, hold. 
extend and then bend the standing legs knee. That is way harder, I know. Try to keep hip over ankle, try not to overshoot the foot. Breathe, five, four, three, two, one, straighten the right, release the left. Bend both knees, hands to knees, come on up. Woo. And get that blood flow back in your body. Shake it out. That's it. Just breathe, catch your breath. Taking my cues from Betty over here today. <laughs> oh. All right, so you're gonna grab one block. Again, the block will be fully optional. If you're not using a block, have both blocks in the front. If you are using a block, you're gonna very gently, you're gonna step back. You're gonna see if you can capture the block and then take both hands to your other block. Okay, and then you're gonna lift. <sighs> Breathe lots. This is a woohoo, right? So if what happened to me happens to you, don't try to hold on to the block. <laughs> Let that baby go. You don't need the block uh, uh, in hands if that's throwing you off. Let it go. If it's okay, use it. <sighs> Squeeze your block, and then see if you can open your hip to the side so that the knee is pointing out to the side. Squeeze, lower, woo, and release. Shake it out. I know. Other side, hang in there with me. You don't have to use this block at all, by the way. It is, so what the block does is it keeps you, uh, keeps that hamstring engaged more, but it's not necessary to do what we're trying to do, okay? Hardest part is capturing this baby when it's when you're standing, right? So I step back, I try to bend, the same time hand goes to the floor, I squeeze that block in, hands are on blocks or on the floor and squeeze it. Yep, good squeeze and then turn the knee out to the side and breathe. Woo, I know. Good, release, set, set that foot down, the block will go fly and come on up. Good, roll it out. Good, so I'm gonna have you set your blocks aside for now. We're gonna come back to that kind of weird movement in just a second. But I wanna take a break from that. Inhale, reach up. Exhale all the way down. Step back to downward facing dog. And breathe. From down dog, lift your left leg. Optionally, you're going to bend the knee, turn the knee up toward the ceiling as the left heel goes toward the right hip. And then level out the weight that's in your hands. And breathe. Imagine that you're squeezing your block. So give the hamstring a good squeeze. And then release it and step down. Yep, switch to the other side. Right leg goes up. Bend the knee, turn the knee up toward the sky. Try to level out the hands and the shoulders. Squeeze your imaginary block. I know, I know, I know. Squeeze and then release, lower the leg. Bend both knees, take them to the floor. Woo! And come to a seat. I know, right? You would not think this was that hard a class, <laughs> but somehow it, it is. So you're gonna take your blanket and you're gonna put it under your heels, or yes, you're gonna put it under your heels. I moved my mat up some just so I could have room in front of me. 
Right, so here we are, and you're gonna lean back. Make sure you don't collapse back, but just lean back. Draw the shoulders back, keep the chest tall. I want you to dig into your blanket and straighten the legs. And then I want you to dig, 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 dig back and squeeze. Straighten. And squeeze, try to feel that. Straighten, squeeze. If you were in my class last week, or uh, let's see, today's Wednesday, so Sunday, we did this with the triceps, right? Do you remember we were, uh, we were on, in um, Sphinx pose and we did this with the blanket to work the backs of our arms. <sighs> squeeze, squeeze, and straighten. Remember, if you don't have a, a slippery surface, just squeeze in and then walk the heels, squeeze in, walk the heels, squeeze. So do it that way. Good, now bring it in part way and squeeze. Lift one heel, hold that. Straighten, squeeze. Two, squeeze. Three, yep. Four, Squeeze, one more, five, squeeze in part way, hold the other, lift the hand and breathe. Push the heel into the blanket. Five, four, three, two, one. Set the heel down, take the hands back, open up your chest, lift the other leg. Dig in with that left foot, straighten, squeeze in, two, Squeeze, three, that's it, relax your face. Four, <laughs> and five, squeeze in and hold like a big old dig. Release the hands, Whoo! five, four, three, two, one, lower, just straighten both legs. Whoo! circle out your ankles. So I find that if you scrunch up your face, it doesn't help. <laughs> you gotta breathe. <laughs> All right, so bend both knees, dig in both heels. Hands come behind. How you hold your hands is okay with me. Do what feels best for your wrist. You can either be here, right fingers pointed or turn. I tend to turn them more out to the sides. It's easier for my wrists. I want you to press down through your hands, lift your hips off the floor and breathe. Now dig into your heels and see if you can move the legs out just a little. Doesn't have to be straight. Yep. If you go too straight, you could just irritate your knees. Hold, squeeze them in, push them out, squeeze in. If this is too hard, Put your butts down, three, squeeze in, four, squeeze in, five, squeeze in, and lower your butts, Woo, straighten your legs. Holy moly, circle your wrists, by the way. Right, I think that's harder on the hands than it is on the legs. Good, drop the heels. And come on down to your back with your knees bent. Your heels are on your blanket. <sighs> Just breathe. So first choice, all you're gonna do, your knees are bent, you're gonna straighten and pull in. When you pull in, I cannot emphasize enough that you wanna focus on the back of the legs like you are pulling in through thick mud and you just got to get those knees bent. Doesn't have to be a big bend. The emphasis is on the back of the legs. Squeeze in. You're okay there. I want you to lift the hips and hold either side of your yoga mat. So bridge pose. You're squeezing in. You're squeezing out a little. Squeeze in and out. Squeeze in, out two more. Squeeze them in, I know. And out, last one, squeeze in and out, and then just come to the floor. Bend both knees, bring both legs to both knees to chest. Hands go behind both knees, straighten them up to the ceiling. 
Good, just circle out those ankles. Draw the shoulders down. I want you to just take the legs that are up at the ceiling, your hands can be down at your sides and bend, bend, bend your knees. Till they're at 90 degrees, press the knees away from you. Now you've got the core engaged. Squeeze as if you're squeezing some kind of block between those legs. Or, you know, if you have one of those big exercise balls, you take that ball between your heels and your hips. Oh yeah, breathe. Hands come behind your head, right knee to left elbow, and switch. You're just doing a little bit of core work, taking your mind off your hamstrings. <laughs> and switch. Nice straight legs, right? That one, when the elbow touches, the other leg fully extends. Squeeze, squeeze. Three, two, and one. Release, bring your knees to your chest. Roll the knees to one side and come on up. If your blanket's been or your mat's been flipped over, go ahead and straighten it. Whew. So where do I go from here? I, I have two things in mind. I have to decide if I can do one or can do both. I think I'm gonna, this is again, so this is gonna be tricky. <laughs> Already, I'm telling you, this is gonna be tricky. Let's do two things. So let's come on up to standing. And I want you to hold the block in one hand. I want you to have your other block on the left side of your mat. Um, this is gonna be balance work. So a wall space might be even better because it's gonna be a little tricky wall, wall. So if you're near a wall or a piece of furniture, <clears throat> probably even better. Left foot forward, right foot back. This block is 100% optional. And if you don't wanna use it, throw it away, okay? So you're gonna see if you can capture it again. Easiest way to do this is to take one hand to your block, grab it with your hand, take the leg up. What does this look like, right? It's basically a variation of half moon. So I'm looking at the floor, I am squeezing my block. If you're not using a block, the leg probably would be better straight. Find your breath. Maybe you can look to the side. Maybe the arm goes up. It's a lot of work. Squeeze the block. It's actually gonna give you stability. And then release, hand to the floor. As you release that leg, just let the block drop. Ooh. straighten it out. <clears throat> I know. So I love the wall for half moon. One of these days we're gonna do a wall class for that very reason. But if you have a wall near you, it's just an awesome thing to find that stability with the wall. So let's go to the other side, right foot forward, left foot back. Take your hand to your block and then just see if you can sandwich that other block between your legs. I know some of you are going, all right, Mary, you've just gone too far. <laughs> Take your hand to your hip if you can. Find your variation of half moon. Squeeze your block, open up your chest. Maybe the arm comes up. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Woo. Release it, step down. Oh, and shake it out. Set your blocks aside. I think we're gonna be done with that. <laughs> You're like, thank goodness. Woo. Stand tall. <laughs> 
I was going to use the strap for this again. Balance and straps are not my favorite. So if you want to use your strap dancer pose, I would take a hand to wall, hook your sit right foot, find your balance on your left, bend your knee, you can use your strap here, okay? And then take the arm up. That's pretty stable for most of us. It's when that arm is going flying that it isn't. So that's your strap or stand tall, bend your knee, grab your foot, hold your pose. Take the other arm up, just find that. Find your breath. Optionally, take it forward. My foot is pushing into my hand, the rest of my body tilting forward, just trying to find that balance. Breathe. Release, shake it out and let go. Oh, knee high. <laughs> I just walk right off screen. Bye. <clears throat> all right, other side, everybody. And then we're going to be done with all of this. Again, try the strap if you'd like. If you've got your strap in a loop, and that loop can go basically from foot. I like foot better than ankle. Okay, so you get your foot, take it here. It's really a pretty stable um, feeling for me anyway. And then you can reach up, right? And press out. Otherwise it's foot to hand. Open up the shoulder, take the other arm up. You can hang out right here. That shoulder draws back. The body tilts forward as the foot presses into the hand, right? Quad stretch, hamstring engagement. Breathe. You got it. And release it and shake it out. Good. And then just stay tall. Go wide on your mat. Nice deep hinge from the hips, come on down. <sighs> Just breathe everybody. So hamstring work right now, we're stretching the hamstrings among other things. Spread through the feet, see if you can lift the inner arches a little bit. <sighs> Find your breath. Good, release that. Down dog. Take the knees to the floor and release your pose. You can have a block nearby. We're gonna come down to our backs and we're gonna do bridge pose again without the blanket. <laughs> so come on down and pause for a second here. So when we think about the hamstrings and, and their importance in certain poses, bridge pose is one of those places where I really find um, the activation of the hamstrings to be very helpful, right? Because in bridge pose, and if you were to go further into wheel, right, the, the quads, the fronts of the legs have to stretch, the hamstrings have to engage to open up the front hips, right? It's just body mechanics. So, so we want the thighs to stretch, we want the hamstrings to engage, so that our hip flexors can stretch or our hip extensors, our glutes can um, fire up. So I want you to think about that. The feet are on the floor. <clears throat> they can be out some, you're actually gonna get more work here. In fact, everybody take the feet out some so that your legs are 
much less bent, and then pull the feet back isometrically and feel your hamstrings, okay? So that's what we're talking about. You should be able to feel those hamstrings engage when you try to slide those feet back without them moving. The feet are just gripping on the yoga mat. That's the hamstring engagement we're talking about. So then take the feet to your level. Again, watch your knees. You're gonna press into the back shoulders and the back arms, engage the belly and tuck pelvis a little bit and lift your hips off the floor. So we start in what we would consider our normal bridge. However high you go is up to you. Your elbows can be bent with your fingers up to the ceiling. What that does is allow you to press into the backs of the arms. It helps you to lift the chest. Now, asymmetrically, try to pull your heels back, right? Feel the difference. Find your breath. Five, four, three, two, one. Now, less pull, but see if the hips are willing to press up anymore. And then press into your feet and feel the hips lift. That's it. Press, breathe. Five, four, three, two, one, lower all the way down. Find your breath. Grab one of your blocks. And you're either gonna put that block on the flattest level, especially any of my folks out there with some low back stuff, or you're gonna put it on the second level, but you're gonna keep it right down on the sacrum. It should be below the line of your hips. So restorative bridge pose, we can play here a little bit. If you're on second level, just know that that block is a little tippier. Um, you can always wrap your hands around it if you want to keep it more stable, okay? So from this more restorative bridge, we're not having to push. I just want you to pull the legs back or the heels back isometrically. Just feel that. And then push them forward. They're still not moving. Feel your quads maybe. Push the heels back, back meaning toward your hips, pull them back. Feel the hamstrings, push them forward. Good, one more, pull them back. Feel that, push forward. Find the happy place in the middle. So you're not pulling, you're not pushing. You've got equal distance with the legs, the feet. The palms turn face up, the chest is lifted, the hips are settled on the block, but I'm not, <clears throat> not completely restorative. I still have a tension in my feet and in my legs so that I'm not just kind of sagging down all that weight on the block, I'm keeping it active. And then just breathe. Chest is open, the arms are externally rotated, so palms are face up. I feel all four corners of my feet on the floor. Just find your breath. Taking the breath in and exhaling it out. Breathing it in. Exhaling it out. Now option one is to stay here. Option two, is gonna to be to bring your right knee to your chest. Again, be super mindful if you're up on that second level and straightening your left leg. So stretching out the psoas muscle on the left side, relax your left leg, relax your right foot. You're just hanging out here. 
allowing gravity to take that stretch through your belly. There should be zero pain in your lower back. If you're feeling some tentativeness in your low back, make sure one, you're at the lowest level of your block and two, maybe press the sacrum to the block a little bit more. But otherwise, deep breath in and deep breath out. As you exhale, you press on the psoas muscle, which is deep in the belly. You press on it a little bit more. It gets a little more stretch. That will also help release low back stuff. One more breath here. So bend your left leg, put that foot back on the floor and then release your right. Switching sides, your left knee heads toward chest. You don't have to hold it. Your right leg straightens down to the floor. Once you're there, relax both feet. It's a real habit for me to flex my feet just out of habit. So just let them relax. Shoulders are heavy. Stretch through the belly. Bend your right. Now this is also optional. If you are on second level, I want you to hold your block, both knees toward chest and both legs up to the ceiling. If your block is flat, it's no problem here, but if it's on the second level, your hips will tend to pop that block down. So I'm just hanging on to it so it doesn't tip. Shoulders are down, your feet are up toward the ceiling. Right, so it not only is this an inversion, um, you could do this legs up the wall, but it's also kind of a, a variation of shoulder stand. And just breathe. So these types of inversions, especially something like legs up the wall, where your legs are resting on a wall, um, are very good for the nervous system. It is supposed to calm and balance the nervous system, much like Nadi Shodna, right? Alternate nostril breathing, balancing both sides of the brain, calming the nervous system moving into parasympathetic side of that nervous system. And then bend both knees, one foot to the floor at a time. Both feet on the floor. Squeeze your hips and legs. Lift the hips. Take your hips off your block. Hold the pose for just a moment, right? Re-engage everything. And then one vertebra at a time, all the way down to the floor. Shift your hips to the left edge of your mat. Bring the knees up and twist to the right. Ooh, just stretch it out. <sighs> Deep breath.
Releasing from this side, take one knee up and then the other feet to the floor. Shift your hips to the right edge, knees up and then over to the left. That's it. Allow your whole body to calm down, settle down. Coming back to equilibrium. And then take it all back to center. Both knees to chest. Keep your right leg in straight and the left leg nice and long and just stretch through that whole front of your hip, front of your quadricep. And then switch sides, right leg long, left knee in. And then both legs straight and find your Shavasana. We soften down. We let go for now. We find ways to continue to come to our center, to our grounding, to this calm space that is our birthright. Soften the jaw, soften the belly.
soften even more. For those of you who are ready, go ahead and start to wiggle toes. And truly, if you would like to stay in Shavasana for a lot longer, <laughs> just stay, it's okay. Those of you ready, wiggle toes and fingers and then just draw your knees up to your chest. Rock side to side, and then allow those knees to roll to one side or the other. And then very slowly curl up to your seated pose. Bring your hands to your heart. Let's say a prayer for peace. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, everyone.